everybody, I'm Mama Baird and welcome back to my channel. I have another food bank haul for you. Now this is my local food bank that I get to go shopping in. We are a family of six, so that depends on how many portions of each you can get and you can go and pick and choose what you want. You can leave what you wouldn't use and then you can grab stuff that you will use. It's a really nice option to be able to pick and shop, that's for sure. I just want to take a moment and thank all my new subscribers and anybody who's watching me for the first time. My name is Carolina. I live in Montana. And I just want to let you know that it's okay to go to the food bank. You can be working and still need to go to the food bank. There's no shame. There's no stigma. It's all people trying to feed their families. And you do what you have to do to feed your families. And that's what these are for. So don't feel embarrassed. Don't feel like, oh, I have to be homeless. I have to have 20 kids. Or don't feel like because you're working that you shouldn't be able to go to the food bank. No. Right now, everybody is struggling financially. And if you need help, go get the help. That's what they're for. All right, all right, enough jibber jabber. Let's get into the haul. Wait till you see what I got. And I'm gonna start off with the breads. Uh, today they were able to pick four, so I picked these four. This is a cranberry walnut bread from Costco. Pumpkin spice bagels. Natural oats and wheat honey from Wheat Montana, local bread company here, and then their flaxseed. And then these two, they had an extra bin where they just had lots and lots of bread. So I got the pumpkin spice muffins and then some of these sub rolls. I've been waiting for the pumpkin spice stuff to hit. You know, it went out a couple of weeks ago and then as soon as the expiration date hits, they're going to be donating it. And then for the produce, I was allowed to get two bags of stuff. And honestly, guys, they had these uh, fresh grown. Uh, do you know what these are? Do you know what they are? Anybody? Anybody? Guess? They're shallots. So shallots are kind of like if an onion and a garlic had a baby, it would be Miss Shallot here. And they smell divine. Oh, you can tell, look at the dirt. They literally just pulled these from the local gardens and donated them to the food bank. So that is awesome. So I got a bunch of these uh, shallots and then I got some more onions just to get myself stocked up on some nice good onions. Then in the pantry section the everyday pantry where you can take as much as you feel you need you could only have one flour but the rest they had oats they had macaroni they had brown and white rice they usually have cereal like the um just the generic cheerios so we go through a lot of oatmeal here so i grabbed two bags of oatmeal and then this comes in a big bag and this is how they portion it at the food bank so this is what the volunteers do is they just sit there and they portion food into these so that we can take what we need. They didn't have much to offer in any extra dairy. Just I got my gallon of milk, which is awesome because we just ran out. So I'm thankful for that. And then for the meats, they had these street taco meats. This is chili lime with cilantro. So this is chicken breast. And it's got, let's see, cilantro seasonings and stuff. Looks pretty good. So they had that one, and then they had a beef one, boneless beef loin, flap loin meat steak with chimichurri. Yep, so it's got seasonings on it already. Oh, it's got the chimichurri marinade in there. Oh, those are going to be good for some tacos. What else would you guys use this for? If you could cook this meat up and didn't turn it into a taco, what else would you turn this in? Let me know. And then I got a pound of pork sausage. Yum. Now that you saw what I got in my haul, I'm going to be fixing up some dinner. And I have been inspired by this cranberry walnut bread. I recently just saw a, uh, you know guys, I get most of my recipes from Pinterest, you know, it's nothing special. I was scouring Pinterest and I saw a raisin bread grilled cheese apple sandwich. And I'm like, oof, that sounds delicious. So we're gonna be using this cranberry walnut bread. And then I happen to still have this mango ginger cheese that I got a couple of hauls back. And it's been staring at me and I've been staring at it. And we've been, you know, doing the who's going to blink contest and what I'm going to do with this. And I think this mango ginger is going to go perfect in our sandwich. So let's give her a try. I got some apples here we're going to be cutting up. And then, hold on. slice up this puppy you know I think we should weigh this let me go get my big scale 
All right, let's see if this works. Nineteen point eight pound karabi. Holy moly! Twenty pound karabi. Well, uh, props to the gardener whoever grew this. Holy moly! You know, guys, I got stopped three times in my food bank because I picked this up. They're like, "What is that?" It's a massive karabi. I've never seen one this big. So we're gonna cut this open and we're gonna give it a try. So, had to break out my big board for this one. So I've never attempted to cut a karabi this big, but let's just treat it like a watermelon, shall we? So let's flip her on the side. Right here you can see, man, I wonder how hard they had to dig this up. They pretty much had to hack this thing, it was so big. Okay, so let's cut off these greens. Now these greens are edible. Could totally eat these if you would want. Karabi is part of the cabbage family. It's very similar to that. It has a peppery, sweet taste to it. So let's. Man, I don't even know what I'm gonna do. Usually you cannot eat this bitter end down here. It's pretty tough. Oh, <laughs> it's really tough. Release the eye knife. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's start at the top here, shall we? Move this down. You don't want to eat the peel. Got most of the skin off. Oh. <laughs> now this can be eaten raw. Some people shred this and use it as a slaw. I always say, give your food a try. So you know what it tastes like. Mmm. It's got, it's not even like, I wouldn't even say it's peppery. It's really sweet. It's definitely a unique flavor. Very mild. I can see this taking on the flavor of like a vinaigrette or a salad dressing very easily. So yeah, and this is a Karabi's very good sauteed. So we're gonna cut this up. We're gonna add some bacon and let's make ourselves a grilled cheese sandwich with a side of Karabi. I think that's good enough for dinner. Now, if you want to see what I'm going to do with the rest of this karabi, you'll just have to subscribe. Sorry. I'm going to put this karabi in a bowl. I'm going to use it in a minute. And then with this karabi, I'm going to cut open one of these shallots. I would normally put onion and bacon with a karabi like that. But I want to show you what the shallot looks like. God, I wish you could smell this, guys. It smells so good. So let's dice this up. This looks just like, like seriously, an onion. It smells like garlic. It's really weird. You guys should try shallots if you haven't tried them. All right, so I'm going to cut it just like an onion. I'm going to cut the tip off and then go down that root there. Cut it in half. 
and then peel the skin off. And now remember, you can save these skins for broth, homemade chicken broth. If you haven't done broth before, I do have a video of making homemade turkey broth. I can link that below. Do yourselves a favor, learn how to make your own broth. It tastes so much better, guys. Especially having these shallot peels in there. Oh, that'll be so good. All right, so let's get these peeled off. Nail in there. Good thing about having nails, you can get under the onion skins. I can get under that skin, baby. You know I can. Okay. And then I'm going to cut it in half again. Just like that. So it's in two different layers. Cut across this way. You don't want to cut all the way through to the root. You want to use that root to be able to keep them together. Make sure you're watching your fingers. And there we go. So let's slice. So let's slice and dice this other one. shallot diced looks great and then I'm gonna go ahead and slice my apples while I'm at it let's go ahead and get all my prep work done all right so apples might be too many apples Look at that bread. Mm. I'm bored to get crowded. You know, let's get these apples on real quick. I'm gonna turn on both ones. I got some peppered bacon here. So I'm gonna start cooking that for our kurabi with our shallots. And some butter here for our apples. Okay, we're gonna get those working. And then I'm gonna switch to a serrated knife to cut the bread. It works a lot better and you won't be tearing up your bread like you were if you were to use a regular knife. Guys, look at that. Wow. Oops, make that piece uneven. Whoa. Oh yeah, this is gonna be a good sandwich, guys. There we go. Bread cut. All right, and then we're gonna cut the cheese. <laughs> you know what I mean? Literally just gonna cut cheese, nothing fancy. Oh. Falling apart here. Maybe this is a crumbly cheese. Oh, let's try some. Always want to try it. Wow. Oh, that's delicious. Oh, it's so creamy. All right. Oh, it's definitely a crumbly cheese. Is it okay? I mean, make this work. All right, cheese cut, and it's not even stinky. <laughs> All right, let's go back to the stove. Now, if you don't have bacon, obviously you could just use like um, butter, coconut oil, whatever kind of fat you usually like to use, olive oil. Until they're a little soft. You don't really want them too mushy. So you want them cooked a little bit. Okay, right, these apples I'm gonna pull off. Okay, and 
cook this apart, I'm going to add the shallots. I light like this pan back on fire. I'm going to toast some walnuts. A little bit of honey in here. And some cinnamon. This isn't going to take long, so you want to sit here and watch it. Just a couple minutes. I got my heat on like a four, so it's pretty down low. Alright, that's all that needs. I'm turning that off. And then I'm going to add some cream cheese. Couple tablespoons of some powdered sugar. Just a little bit. And then we're gonna add our pecan mixture here. I'm sorry, a walnut mixture here. This is going to be like our spread that goes on our sandwich. Alright, a little bit of salt just to counteract that sweetness in there. You always want to make sure you taste everything, so I'm going to give this a taste. Oh yeah. All right, so this bacon and shallots are looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and add the kohlrabi at this point. I'm also gonna add some salt to this. And while that's cooking, I'm going to wash this walnut pan so I can toast our sandwiches. All right. We're going to let the heat dry that pan. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is take our walnut, honey, cinnamon, cream cheese mixture, spread it on one side. And then we're going to get our apples. This thumb inside. Okay, you just want to spread them so you kind of get an apple in every bite, you know. And then, whoop, and our mango ginger cheese, which is very crumbly. Stay on there. Then we're gonna butter this side. Into our pan. Alright, well that's toasting. Let's check the kohlrabi. Oh, it's looking good. I'm going to turn it up a little bit because you can see it's starting to get some moisture down here. So we're going to turn it up so we can get a good sear on it. Alright, 
let's check on this one. Let's try and give her a well, Try and give her a flip here. Oh yeah. Looks great. Holy moly, guys, this looks fantastic. Man, I don't think I've ever made anything so fancy. This would be, yes? Can I get in? I'm not. Let's give this beauty a try. Man, I should be in a restaurant. Mmm. Ever get those moments you're like, man, I love that I can cook. Like the combination of that cheese with the apple, that's kind of like the sourness of the cheese with the sweet of the apple, that goes great together. You get the crunch of the walnuts, not only in the bread, but on that cream cheese spread. The cream cheese kind of just oozes into the sandwich. Oh my gosh, you guys, you gotta give this a try. You can get your hands on this cranberry walnut bread from Costco, make it. <laughs> Let's go check the kurabi. Oh, it's looking good. I can see the sear on the sides there. That's what we're looking for. Look at that. Alright guys, now it's time to try this karabi. Once it cook, once it's cooked, you know it's that kind of texture where it's still solid and then you put it into your mouth and you give it a little bit of pressure and it just dissolves and just starts melting. That's what this tastes like. This is so good. Who would have known a 20 pound karabi tastes so delicious. So if you guys get one, don't be afraid to try it. It is delicious. So that's gonna be our dinner tonight, guys. I'm gonna finish cooking up these sandwiches, finish up this karabi. We're gonna make ourselves some plates and we're gonna sit down to a family dinner. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll catch you next time on Mama Birds. <laughs>